What's good, Josh? Your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we'll be checking out 10 greatest WWE SummerSlams ever, man. SummerSlam is usually like the WrestleMania in the middle of the year. That's what it usually is supposed to be. It's supposed to be the biggest matches, supposed to be the biggest spotlight for WWE during the summer outside of WrestleMania. And there's been some great legendary SummerSlams and I had to check this out because SummerSlam is later on this week. So best believe you know we're gonna be doing a live stream reaction on the main page. So be on the lookout for that. But before we get into the reaction, this video is brought to you by DraftKings. WWE is having the biggest event of the summer and DraftKings wants to celebrate that by giving you guys the opportunity to win some cash in this year's SummerSlam DraftKings pool. All you have to do is sign up using my promo code Kicking with Ross, win $25,000. Once you sign in, all you have to do is go over to pools. Once you get to pools, scroll down to the bottom where it says free 25K WWE SummerSlam pool, free entry, click in, and you're greeted with this screen. And on this screen, you have the option to potentially choose who will win the match, where will the match end. You also have different stipulations like what will be the first foreign object used in the match. And you can also potentially put in a vote on will Theory cash in his briefcase at SummerSlam this year. So right now, what I need you to do is download DraftKings, use the promo code Kicking with Ross. Enter in the WWE SummerSlam pool so you can have that opportunity to win you $25,000, man. Only at DraftKings, the official gaming partner of WWE. Now let's get right back into the video. All right, I'm gonna set myself a little challenge because damn it's hard to write SummerSlam content sometimes. Apart from this one sentence, I'm challenging myself to write a SummerSlam list and not include the phrase, the biggest party of the summer. <laughs> that is going to be said too much over the course of the next month and I am nothing if not a trend setting trailblazer. So it's time once again for the biggest, <laughs> no, God! No, God, please, no, no, <laughs> no. I'm Adam Haling from Past the biggest Unknown. Money Here in the are summer. our picks Woo! for the 10 greatest <laughs> SummerSlams of all time. If you'd like to check out other Ace SummerSlam Make content sure we've already made in Past Unknown, Unknown, check out our two already. lists we published last year, the top 20 best and top 20 worst SummerSlam matches of all time. Number 10, 1992. I know, I know. As a Reut Snooty British oh, yeah, fan, 1992 should old. be <laughs> Apples and Pears, Mary Poppins, It's Tuesday, in it. And while, yeah, Yes, in all it. of that is true. <laughs> Honestly, 92 isn't really that good overall. In fact, it's a bit of a mess. It just happens to be a bit of a mess. It has one of the greatest main events ever in front of an insanely hot crowd. Like, here's what was on offer. A very shit Taker versus Kamala match that went four minutes. Crush Damn. versus Repo Man that went six. Nails versus Virgil in an infamously terrible match. And Rick Martel versus Shawn Michaels being pretty good before a double count out in eight minutes. Like, there's a pair of decent tag matches on the card, but without the two marquee matches, Sweet Reese's Pieces, this is a bag of wet hair. Warrior versus Savage was a whole bunch of fun, running nearly half an hour with flair and perfect shenanigans aplenty, constantly teasing a heel turn from one of the company's two top guys, even if it did end in a bit of a cop-out. And then there's Bulldog mm -hmm. versus Hart, one of the most highly acclaimed matches of all time, one of the biggest pops of all time. Like this one match alone is enough to make 92 a milestone event, even if not a consistently entertaining one. Number nine, Definitely 2000. Nine. Speaking of shows, saved by the main event. Actually, that's not fair. There are like four good to great matches on this card, which would have ranked it higher were it not for the presence of Kane versus the great Carly. No, thank you. Why did <laughs> Kane and Carly wrestle three fucking pay per view matches in their career? And then the absolutely cruel rug pull of Christian versus William Regal being hyped as a world title match and going a measly eight seconds. For reference, Kane versus Carly went 10 minutes. I think the book has got their pages mixed up backstage. <laughs> Otherwise, nothing fucking makes sense about that. There's a yeah. lot to love on this card though. Mysterio versus Ziggler in one of the great pay-per-view openers and all-time best intercontinental title matches. The old man version of 2006, old man version of DX facing off against <laughs> the legacy was surprisingly great with the fans having the time of their lives as D-Geriatric X rode in on a fucking tank while Rusev was still a twinkle in Mother Rush's eye. John Cena versus Randy Orton was an overbook load of old WWE style bollocks but I actually kind of think it's camp fun if you're forgiving to its three yes fuck three restarts so far a mixed bag of <laughs> I forgot good about and not, that too. the main event is so awesome and mm -hmm. wonderful to see punk and hardy who had the feud of the year go on last at a big four pay-per-view in a 
barnstormer. That was TLC a fun match. match. Oh my god, that was a TLC fun match. Spot. And also, look, it's the Undertaker. Yeah. What are you up to, big lad? You, you tell it, you, you. You teleported Jeff Hardy away and appeared in his place. Yeah, like the, you did with Seth Rollins, yeah. you tinker. Number eight, yeah, was, 2003. And <laughs> that now, was Undertaker's superpower shenanigans. <laughs> turn the last two entries on their head. A show that was good despite its main event. Actually, that's not fair. If Goldberg had just won this match instead of Triple H activating hammer time and using yeah. his bad dick to fuck with Bill's momentum, the chamber match and likely the whole show might have been seen as one of the greats. Mm -hmm. There's a ton of fun matches on the card. Shane McMahon versus Eric Bischoff is total nonsense, but the crowd loves seeing Austin have some fun. The fatal four-way for the US title saw Guerrero versus Benoit versus Tajiri versus Rhino. That's not too shabby. Kane mm -hmm. and RVD had a fun match. And mm -hmm. best of all, Kurt Angle wrestling Brock Lesnar for over 20 minutes. I do not mind if I do. Also, it directly led to the Iron Man match between Lesnar and Angle, which I like. I'm famous for liking it. So yeah, all things being considered, let's talk about the main event. A stacked chamber lineup. H that, that elimination chamber was tough. And it's, they, oh, bro, they definitely should have pulled the trigger and have Goldberg win it. They should have pulled the trigger, but they didn't. They definitely didn't. Once again, y'all, I don't hate Goldberg. I definitely liked his initial run in WWE. It's just I didn't like how they booked him because he should have been the guy. He should have been the guy to beat Triple H. BK, Y2J, Orton, Triple H, Goldberg, and also Kevin Nash. Yeah. Look at you. You go, girl. Before Goldberg murders Everyone. four of them in Damn sensational man. fashion, pins three, before suddenly having Triple H pull his controller out of the machine in a half and hitting him with a hammer and retaining his title despite doing very little. To sad end, what was otherwise a super fun night. Number Definitely seven, fun. 2008. Talk about an underrated summer slam. Looking back at the card, it's not a show that screams classic, but there's a whole lot of fun here. Punk gets pretty much his only good night during his first world heavyweight title run triple h somehow scratches and claws a half decent match yeah, out of the great Kali. He, he did have a match with the great Kali. <laughs> batista and cena are probably their best match together although that depends on your tolerance for both lads there is a bunch of filler here mvp versus jeff hardy was good glamorella versus kofi and mickey was all right comedy and matt hardy yeah. versus mark henry was yet another nail in the coffin of ecw title matches on wwe pay-per-views how long did yeah. this one go a minute you know, like it's all <laughs> largely okay, but there's no way that SummerSlam 2008 would make the list without two major positives. That wonderful Shawn Michaels fake mm -hmm. retirement segment that ends with Jericho clocking Mrs. BK mm -hmm. for real reels like a bad boy. And that main event match of Edge versus Taker going dick first, balls last, and a Hell in a Cell match that ends in Edge being sent to actual yeah. hell. The <laughs> that shit was crazy. He definitely sent him to the gulags of hell. <laughs> it was very stupid with Vicky Guerrero essentially hiring the Undertaker to kill her boyfriend. Yeah. Man, the match went hard with Edge eating a ton of shit in some truly horrendous spots. And then yes, as aforementioned, dying in actual hell. The yeah. show's not full of bright spots, but those bright spots burn blindingly. Number six, 1998. We're on the high way to hell. Oh, Bloody no. love a WWE <laughs> show at Madison Square Garden. WWE don't go home nearly enough, but when they do, it's almost always a good show. Mania's 10 and 20, Survivor Series 02, the Rumble Eight. Such a joy to see WWE's hometown crowd show up and lend their voice to elevate a pay-per-view in SummerSlam 98 is no exception. It would still be a few months before WWE officially rebranded to form the Attitude Era, but everything that people love about it is present and correct here. Solid mid-card action with the hair versus hair match featuring two of the best mid-card workers of all the new generation in Jarrett and X-Pac. A surprisingly good Lions Den match between Owen Hart and Ken Shamrock where no one can tell that the match is really silly. The stars <laughs> of the future in The Rock yep. and Triple H having a Stormer of a ladder match. A ladder match that felt differently violent to the rubber acrobatics of the HBK matches as well. A great storyline tag match pitting the Outlaws versus a partnerless mankind. And as blockbuster a main event as WWE had on its books at mm -hmm. the time. Pre-silly ministry taker versus established face of the company and pretty much face of pro wrestling at that yep. point. Steve Austin. Yep. One or two. Definitely, man. It's, it's, it's so crazy looking back on it, bro, and, and how... They had the pieces to literally just take the world by storm, bro. They had the talent. They had the 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 fans behind them. Like wrestling back then in the nineties, it just was different, bro. I wish some of you guys, some of our younger so, uh subscribers, could have witnessed that live. Like people actually like were excited. And it wasn't just like how it is now. People are excited about wrestling, but it's more 
It's more of the minority. You may catch some casuals who are, you know, they they get really excited. It was it was the talk of the town. Either you was talking about sports or you was talking about wrestling. That's really what it was. You can talk about politics and shit here and there. But it was sports and wrestling. Deadass. That's really what it was. Two bad spots here. The Great Oddities times. tag match is exactly that. But otherwise, this is a show that really delivers on all the elements that made WWE so hot in the late 90s. Number five, 2014. I will keep banging the drum that 2014 <laughs> might just have been WWE's best single calendar year <laughs> since 2000 in terms of stories and talent. And I do not care if you agree or not. WWE had a pitch perfect mid card feud on its hands mm -hmm. in the violent breakup of the Shield. And by the end of the show, a big boss at the top of the card. That I just did a reaction on this video of John Cena getting fucking eviscerated by Brock Lesnar. What, that was a good. That was a, that was a good pay per view, man. Enjoyable SummerSlam. WWE have only really For the been most able part. to recreate once in heel Roman Reigns. Honestly, while most will remember this as a two match show, the amazing lumberjack match and the shocking main event. There's yeah. nothing really bad on the card at all. Ziggler Miz was good. Rusev got in a strong win during his unstoppable run. Wyatt Jericho saw Bray get a much needed W. Stephanie versus Brie Bella was better than anyone thought it should be. Mm -hmm. Even Reigns Orton was good, but yeah, that main event. The yeah, Brock Lesnar trucking the man who would not and could not be trucked, defeating Superman in convincing fashion. Loved a it. giant shot of adrenaline in WWE's hierarchy, and even made ending the streak at Mania 30 seem like a good idea. It's a great show. Number four, great show. 2013. I love this SummerSlam because it's probably the perfect hybrid of WWE style high drama and WWE finally doing things with the air quotes indie darlings it had on its roster. The show is not perfect. Bray mm -hmm. Wyatt and Kane's Inferno match was a bit of a letdown. Natalia and Brie Bella wasn't anything to write home about. And Ziggler and Caitlin beating Biggie and AJ Lee isn't exactly a consolation prize from having the world title kick straight out of his hands by Alberto yeah. Del Wanker. But everything else, capital letters, rules. Del Rio and Christian are top notch workers and have a fab title match. Cody Rhodes versus Damian Standow was a fun fallout match. Cody, Cody with the mustache. Over <laughs> money in the bank. And honestly, Punk versus Lesnar might be Brock's best actual. That shit was fun. That, that was a fun match. Boy, that was a fun match. Proper wrestling match of his second WWE run, which is a high bar. And of yeah. course, Daniel Bryan beating John Cena. Fucking. <laughs> oh, man, bro. I watched that live. I marked out. I marked out because, like, holy shit, they did it. He actually won. And then probably one of the coolest swerves up there with the Seth Rollins heel turn on the shield. Triple H pedigrees him. Randy comes out and he gets the pin because Randy Orton was the money in the bank winner. Pins him one, two, three. When I say I went from a high, an all-time high, to a low, like I was just defeated. I was just like, you motherfucker. You month, bro, I was so hurt, but it was so good. That shit was so good. Clean as you like with his debuting Psycho knee before walking straight into his own red wedding. Paul Levesque sends his regards. A oh. top class example that, that when was they good. want to, WWE can still break your heart in the good way. The that was good, The storyline might have run a little long, but it started beautifully. It's This was the moment. The Yes movement got even more stronger. This was the moment to his his future WrestleMania main event. Even though backstage, I don't think they planned on having him be the main event. But this was the moment it really started. Because now people are like, all right, you're pissing us off. And that was good. That was good. And even though, once again, CM Punk leaving kind of changed everything for them. But... This was the catalyst where it was like, we want to see this guy win. Y'all going to make, we want him as the champion, bro. We had a little glimpse of it. We need this as the champion. Number Even three, 2000. It was tough to decide between my top three, so I've just put them in chronological order because f***. <laughs> 
That's as good as order as any when the mm -hmm. shows are as boring as these. 2000 yep. was the year where WWE settled into its best creative groove. Russo was gone and took all his bat shit, tangent stuff, schizophrenic nonsense to poison WCW's <laughs> well instead. As his sort of replacement, Chris Kresge was specializing in good soap opera silliness, but told with simple, comprehensive steps. The main event scene was rock solid, pun very much intended, yeah. and the mid card had been stuffed with the pick of WCW's defecting super worker, so the wrestling was top bollocks as well. Benoit versus Jericho, two out of three falls. Yes, please, mm -hmm. I'll take thirds. Throw in Shane McMahon's first iconic jump yeah. off a big thing. <laughs> the first ever TLC match. First ever TLC match. Extraordinarily oh. good with a capital extra good. And the that, main of that first TLC match. Oh my God. I can go back and watch that match and still just be like, oh, this is great. This is fucking fantastic, man. Oh, man. Ben, which saw one of WWE's best storylines of the year with a Kurt, Triple H, and Steph love triangle boiling over in grand fashion, albeit a fashion that nearly killed Kurt Angle via a botched pedigree. The fact mm -hmm. that he could finish that match despite getting his bell rung harder than the Campanology Olympics is further proof that he's the best of all time. A wonderful oh, for sure. SummerSlam. Even an underwhelming Kane Taker match and a whole stink face match yeah. couldn't sully. Number two, 2001. If it wasn't tainted by association with the invasion, WWE creatively at least, dropping the ball in the potentially biggest wrestling storyline of all time yeah, SummerSlam 2001 they definitely dropped a ball on a serious angle. contender for best SummerSlam ever it's fucking brilliant lads RVD and Jeff Hardy's ladder match is phenomenal Jericho versus Rhino is good X-Pac and Tajiri was good Edge versus Lance Storm is low-key one of the best SummerSlam openers honestly the only match you could consider bad is a steel cage match between Taker and Kane and DDP and Canyon not because fans didn't enjoy it far from it but just because it served as a dispiriting burial for one of WCW's most beloved top stars but hey mm -hmm. look don't think about that Think about the last two matches instead, cause they're mint. The returning Rock beating Booker T to win the WCW yep. title to much rejoicing, and especially, e fucking especially, Kurt yep. Angle versus Steve Austin for the WWF title. One of my favorite wrestlers, best performances Very good of match. all time. Fantastic Angle match. emerging as a cherished babyface, proudly carrying the flag for the Fed and taking Austin to his limit over 20 marvelous minutes. It might be one of the only world title matches that's actually helped by being a DQ finish rather than hurt by it. Austin losing his damn mind of being unable to put my Olympic hero away, choosing to murder every referee in the company <laughs> until someone realized that actually it might be best if not every WWF wrestler was dead and finally stopped the thing. It was a glorious match and a really good show throughout with WWE this still is bringing benefiting me so from much still nostalgia. somehow white hot attitude era fan base. And number one, 2002. I mean... Yeah, mm. SummerSlam 2002 is the best SummerSlam by a country mile. All the matches you remember as being good are better than you remember, and the matches you can't remember... Of course, you know, Dub would not... <laughs> Dub, this is the moment Dub did not care for Brock. When Brock beat Dub... I mean, when I said Brock beat Dub. When Brock beat Roman Reigns... I'm, well, I'm tripping. When Brock beat The Rock... <laughs> I hope I'm not predicting the future. When Brock beat The Rock at SummerSlam, this is the moment Dub was like, nah, I'm good on him. Dub not realizing, like, you know, The Rock, he was believing. He was doing, he was going to Hollywood. That was his, that was going to be his thing. Brock was the next big thing, no pun intended. Dub was like, nah, fuck that. <laughs> This is this is the infamous moment right here. Are almost as good as those. Here's just a little list for you. Angle Mysterio, aka the best opening match to a pay-per-view maybe ever. Flair Jericho, Edge Guerrero, Van Dam Benoit. Oh, the main event of Brock Rock was a wonderfully weird match where the crowd slow turned the Rock heel. The Un-Americans mm -hmm. were all over the show, and even though the matches weren't five stars, they got them some good heat on them because there's no bastard worse than a Canadian bastard. And finally, Shawn Michaels versus Triple H, which belongs on the podium for top three SummerSlam matches oh, yeah. of this, all time. This match here too. Oh my God, this is so good. A wonderfully inventive and brutal slob. Oh, it was so fun. The heartfelt joy that not only could HBK still go, but yeah. somehow he seemed to be even better, better in his yeah. return match than before he left. SummerSlam 2002 truly was the biggest party of the summer. Oh, f and that's our list. What's your favorite <laughs> SummerSlam of all time? Hey man, this, this, this was a, a, a dope list. This brings me back. This is definitely going to make me want to watch some of these SummerSlam matches later on uh, um, uh, this week as well. Actually, I think we're going to check out the HBK and Triple H match they had at SummerSlam. Um, you know, since the SummerSlam week 
Uh, and I think we're going to check that out on Patreon, the whole match. So make sure you subscribe to the Clutch Patreon. That way you can see our reaction to that. I don't think Dub has ever seen that match. So I think that's going to be pretty cool. But yeah, man, I, I just miss when the shows like these SummerSlam events, these pay-per-views, they were, they're always supposed to feel like WrestleMania in the summer. And I, I really do, you know, appreciate when they're, you know, they're built up that way. Last year's SummerSlam was actually not that bad. It was, it was actually for them. There was some, some stuff I wasn't the biggest fan of. Of course, the Bianca Belair stuff I didn't really like. But for the most part, it was okay. I think a lot of people were really hyped for the John Cena and Roman Reigns match. A lot of us were super hyped for that. And they, that felt like a SummerSlam match. This time, Brock versus Roman. Now, it's the last man standing match. Vince McMahon is not head of creative. Who knows what they do? I don't know. We will see, man. But, yeah, this this is uh, uh this is one of those type of things where it's like, I don't know. SummerSlam this year, it doesn't have a bad card from what's been built. But I don't know if the hype is... I think the hype is more there because of the behind the scene things on what's been going on with WWE, with Vince McMahon and everything else. I think that's where more of the hype has come from than the actual pay-per-view itself. But who knows? It could be a good show. Could be a good showing this year. So comment down below. Let me know what's your favorite SummerSlam pay-per-view or like, you know, favorite SummerSlam pay-per-view or favorite SummerSlam match. Let me know down below. But I appreciate all the love and support. Roll to... 90k, appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.